Well then, uh, konnichiwa to you all, or good morning, in the language you prefer. Um, so, we came to the Bleach 525 review called Unconsciousness and Consciousness uh, chapter. Um, like uh, I have said in the previous review of Bleach 524, um, I was kind of have the idea that uh, Unowana Zempakto Minazuki was the reason why Zaraki was killed and returned to life or was almost killed or was on the brink of death and returned. Uh, so Minazuki Zempakto uh, and Unowana obviously uh, are healing uh, Zaraki's wounds at the same time she inflicts them happen in. So, um, we did see the flashback about the battle that was fought between Unowana and Zaraki in the past. At the time, Unowana still uh, is the captain of the 11th division, Zaraki was only a child, a child with great potential, uh, great uh, uh, a nivel, uh, level of uh, uh, Reiatsu. Um, apparently, the scene of Unowana on his uh, on view, I think, uh, is that she forced Zanaraki to seal off his power. Um, I think that also is connected with that is because uh, if she was weaker than him, since the title of Kempechi is passed on to the next generation strong Shinigami, so apparently Zaraki suppose, was supposed to be the second Kenpachi, but that did not happen. So I think that the stock on the head of Unowana is also part of his scene. Um, on the overall of the chapter, I like the panels, they were, the, the, the battle was depicted uh, quite good. Um, still, I wondered about uh, the powers of uh, Unowana. So, she is fighting with Saraki uh, without using um, too much power. Um, she is fighting only with his own skill. So, uh, if she is healing Saraki at the same time she is stabbing him or wounded him or almost kill him so uh, I come I have one uh, idea about the powers of the Uno um, and that was kind of a paradox because uh, apparently but this is just my speculation on the issue is that uh, Uno and is kind of the yin and yang the light and the darkness um, in the way that uh, if his shikai or her shikai um, treats others or help others to get healed, um, I began to wonder if if she activates his bankai, what kind of power uh, could result of unleashing his bankai uh, or her bankai? So I think that uh, probably his bankai on contrary to his shikai abilities that are apparently healing others i bet that his bankai is shared destruction shared destructive power mm, i think that's the most likely supposition about this uh, duality in power does the yin and yang that i speak uh, earlier um, about uh, Zaraki, well, um, it's a reveal that he narrowly loses to Ishigo, but Ishigo did help him to break part of the barrier he had imposed himself. Uh, she also speaks about the battle with Noitra, uh, and um, apparently Noitra also helped break that uh, uh, border uh, of 
So, I, I remember again também, also uh, about the battle with Neutra, that Zaraki in the end of the battle, uh, he did not intend to finish off Neutra, but since Neutra was quite stubborn and uh, lashed out at the last moment against Zaraki, Zaraki in the end did kill him. But Zaraki apparently he enjoys killing, yes. Uh, he desires to fight stronger opponents, yes, it's true. Apparently he desires that since he is younger uh, uh, days when he was a child, because no ma nobody was a, a challenge to him. However, Zaraki also he is not quite found to kill off um, the adversaries that he thinks that worthy. Um, with Ishigo, he had the situation, however he was defeated, but narrowly defeated. With Neutra, he was ready to spare Neutra, but due to, to the stubbornness of Neutra, he ended up killing him. Uh, I remember way back in the manga when I think we have um, a chapter about uh, Ikaku and the first time Kenpachi and Ikako fought uh, and in that fight Ikako also survived even if he was wounded um, then I remember that Zaraki told him something like that yeah you are you are defeated but if you are not dead you are lucky so if you are lucky come at me again in the future and try to kill me or something like that. So Zaraki in the end simply does, does not desire to kill the, the ones that he considers stronger because since he enjoys fighting so much, uh, he desires to have kind of rematches with uh, previous adversaries that survived his battle with him. Um, so on the, uh, in, on the chapter, that's it. Um, this is quite uh, small review however uh, in the next chapter I do hope that we did see uh, more about the past of Unowana uh, perhaps the, the reason why she stepped down as uh, the 11th division captain and the Kenpachi but uh, apparently the, the is she stepping down is a sign a sign that even if even after she defeats Zaraki she thinks that uh, she can no longer call himself Kenpachi because uh, she knew or she encountered his her successor in that case that will be Zaraki however since uh, he did not become the second Kenpachi and in the end become the 11th Kenpachi so this some way some kinda implies that from the second Kenpachi until the 10th Kenpachi they are not the rightful heirs to the title of Kenpachi apparently uh, the rightful heir to the title of Kenpachi will be Zaraki so but uh, for some reason we don't know perhaps in the next chapter Kubo will explain that what happened after the battle they fought and why uh, even if Unowana defeated Zaraki why he did not die uh, and why he again returned to Rukongai or she departed Rukongai and returned to Serite or something like that um, I strongly hope that Kubo keeps up with the fighting between uh, Unowan and Zaraki and probably we could see if Zaraki apparently in the last panel Zaraki is already powered up so it's pop it's possible that the next chapter Unowana or in the beginning or the middle or perhaps most likely in the end of the next chapter probably Unowana will be forced to go Bankai apparently so uh, that's my review for Bleach 525 chapter hope you enjoy see you soon peace